So the next bit is entering truth and building additional temporary tools. So again, what I'm going to do now is to save the machine state. Take another snapshot and then carry on with the build. Okay, so it's complete. Let's do take. And once again, I'll call this after the chapter name, I think. Uh, let's keep that up. Okay, so again, we're getting a history of the build, which we can go back to certain points where I've taken the snapshots, so it can all be very useful in case that's a necessary thing to do. So let's go back and carry on with the next part, next chapter. I'll just wait for the network to pop up again. Okay, it's connected. So this chapter shows how to build the last missing bits of the temporary system of tools needed to build various packages. Now that all the circular dependencies have resolved have been resolved to true environment, completely isolated from the host operating system except for the running kernel can be used for the build. For proper operation of the isolated environment, some communication with the running kernel must be established. This is done via the so-called virtual kernel file systems, which will be mounted before entering the true environment. You may want to verify that they are mounting using the by issuing the find mounts command. Um, under entering the true environment, the commands must be entered the root with the LFS variable set. After entering true, all commands are run as root. Fortunately, without access to the OS of the computer you built LFS on, be careful anyway, as it is easy to destroy the whole LFS system with bad commands. Okay, so we'll see what that's talking about right now. So the first thing it says we're not going to be root anymore, so we'll do Control D to come out of the LFS user. We'll echo LFS to make sure that's still set, which it is. And the first thing we're going to do is to change ownership of everything we've built uh, for the reasons there, it's just a bit more secure for the system. Again, it doesn't really matter so much because we're in a live temporary environment, um, but it could matter later on. Sorry, not the temporary environment, the um, virtual machine. It could matter if you were to keep the LFS system and use it day to day. So preparing a virtual kernel file system, so what we're going to do is mount these virtual file systems into the LFS directory so that they're available within the truth because everything outside the LFS directory will not be visible once we're in the truth. So by linking them in like this, we'll um, be giving access to the kernel virtual file systems as mentioned previously. So we've created some directories for these file systems to reside. We'll mount the first one, which is dev. And then mount the remaining ones. So there's one under dev called PTS. The proc file system. The sys file system and the run file system. And it says on some host systems, the dev SHM is a symbolic link to run SHM. Um, the run temp first was mounted above, so in this case only a directory needs to be created. In other host systems, SHM is a mount point for tempfs. 
In that case, the amount of a dev above will only create a dev SHM as a directory in the true environment. In this situation, we must explicitly mount a tempfs. So once again, we run this. Gen 2 won't actually do anything because it doesn't need to be reconfigured. Certain other Linux operating systems will, will be. So you can see that no directory has been created there. Um, but the temp will have been, I think, if I read, read that right. So just run that command anyway, irrespective of what environment you're in, and you'll know that you'll get the right results. So now we're going to enter the true environment. All we need to do is to copy this in. But one thing I will do is to add in the make, oh, to do it like that, to add in the make flags. So I'm just going to add in make flags equals minus J24 as I did before with the LFS user. So that means that now we're in this true environment. You can see this is our LFS system we're building up. It's got today's date on the today's times. If I echo make flags, you'll see it's got that value that I've just put in as part of the true command. Uh, so it allows subsequent builds to use all the cores as necessary. So now we're going to create some more directories. Some might already exist. Some may be created as we go on anyway. But if we create them now, we know they're there. I'm not going to copy and paste all of these in. Um, there should be... Well, you'll be able to read the status as they go in. So we've typed those commands in there. And you can see, if just check what's been put. It says it's created the directory. So that's from this top section. A couple of links have been done and some directories have been installed with certain permissions. So that, that looks to me as if it's all run without any problems. And some information about the existence of user lib64. The LFS editors have decided not to use it. Creating some essential files and symlinks. So we'll create one here for mounted file systems. Create a default hosts for host file, which is needed for Perl. Uh, an etc, a basic etc password file, and a basic group file as well. We create a tester user to allow us to run tests as, as that user. And now we do a re-login and it will get rid of this. I have no name because we've now got some resolution as to what the user is. And as you can see it's root, it's what you'd expect. And finally, we run these four commands in to create some default files. Again, you can see if it hadn't have said what was what file was being created, you wouldn't really know what command had done what. But you can tie these up. You can see that uh, everything's been created and run correctly. So let's carry on building these last few tools. And we start with get text. So now because we're in the true directory, we haven't got the hierarchy around the host system. All we need to do from the root is to change to the sources directory. There's no none of this MNT LFS, and that's why it's a little bit safer being in the true. All we can mess up now is the LFS system, but not the host. So once again, we do get text, extract it, change into it and start with the building
build it. Okay, and we can now tidy up and move on to bison. So configure Build it and install it, and that's that complete. And move on to Perl. So run this shell command to configure the package. and build a package. And finally, we install it and tidy up. Move on to Python. A uh, Python package begins with a capital letter P, as it says in the manual there in the book. So it can be a little bit confusing if you don't remember that. It's only caught me out once or twice in the past. And run configure. and build it. And finally we install the package. It's done. And move on to text info. And this most basic of installation instructions, a straightforward configure, make and make install. You won't see anything simpler really. And that's done. Finally, we've got Util Linux. So we make this directory, copy this configure command. and build the system. Lastly, we install it with make install and that's complete. And we move on. So the next bit is about cleaning up and saving the temporary system. 
So firstly, um, this just saves a little bit of disk space, which if you're tight on space can make a little bit of a difference. Let's see how much space we've got. We've used 3.4, we've got 26 gig available, so obviously plenty. Um, but you can see how just by installing the temporary gear, if we were on 8 gig, we've only got roughly just over half the space spare if we were on an 8 gig partition. Um, we've still got the main system to build with a lot more packages. Um, so this first one saves about 35 meg, so that's probably not even going to show up on the DF command, which it hasn't. We've got some LA files, the lib archive files to delete. Again, I doubt if they'll make much difference now. But it says the current system size is now about 3 gig, which, yeah, it is 3.4 gig. However, the tools directory is no longer needed. It uses about 1 gig of disk space. So that's a substantial amount of disk space to recover. So let's delete that. And you can see, yes, it's gone down by 1.2 gig. So that, that would make quite a lot of difference if you're tight for space. There's a bit there about backing up, which you can follow if you want to. It's probably pointless in this situation. We've got a virtual machine where we've been taking snapshots. Um, and I'm going to take another snapshot now. In fact, it would have been advisable to take a snapshot just before doing these delete commands in case something went wrong with them. Uh, but not to worry. So I'm going to, again, save the system state, the machine state. And I'm going to take another snapshot and once again, I'll call it the name of the chapter we've just done, which is this one. So completed. Chapter seven. So what I'm going to do now is break off the video and resume in the next video uh, where we actually do the complete system. We start building the actual live system in all of chapter 8.